Hello to the YouTube viewers. Hello to Charlotte. Hi. How are you doing, Charlotte? We sold that golf. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> we're about to take a walk through your neighborhood, uh, but we're standing here. You've been seeing the distillery. You ready to walk? Yeah, sure. You've been seeing the distillery of gin, uh, specifically the distillerie de l'arbre sec. Yes. Uh, and you've just done a great podcast with me talking all about it, so you guys can go and listen to that as well. But uh, as you lock up, I'll tell you the plan. We're going to go and see the neighborhood. Very specifically, five spectacular things to see in central Paris that are all right next to each other. Are you ready to show me your neighborhood? I'm ready. So we can talk about gin before we get to this first spectacular thing. Mm -hmm. um, the distillery behind us. Uh, it's a bit different in that you actually let people do it. Yes, What's absolutely. the story there? Um, well, the... Um the project from the start, so this is not just my project, I have to say. I have two partners um, and um, we came up with the idea um, a while back. It took us over five years to, right. um, to open, but yeah, the, the concept has always been we wanted to be producers. This is our first job. We make gin, right. we uh, make uh, spirits from, you know, French ingredients, etc. Uh, but we want it to be very accessible right. and open to the public and hence the location right in the center of Paris. First arrondissement. First arrondissement, so you can't be more central than this. And I love it. I'm going to say it on the record. I really love what you guys are doing now. I said it when we yeah. did our uh, gin making. Yeah. Mixing the ingredients, picking everything. Firstly, the setting is brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> but then the idea of picking the different uh, botan botanicals. Yeah, botanicals. And to walk away with your own bottle of gin. I just love it as an activity. So go and say hello to Charlotte and the team at the distillery. Uh, but now more specifically, this neighborhood, walking through the first hour this month, I think a lot of people maybe watching at home would think, First hour in this month, Louvre, not much else to see. Yeah, it's true, but I think it's wrong. There's so many little, you know, little um, restaurants and little places you don't expect. Right. And um, I mean, like I said, a lot of the neighborhoods in Paris feel like villages yeah. and this is no exception. Well, I think a lot of people that, say that Paris is one big village. Yeah. And then there are a lot of people that say Paris is 500 small villages. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree know, more with that. You think, yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Uh, and what we're going to do now is we're going to show these the five things that we've kind of picked out yeah you could say six including the distillery definitely you could say seven with where we're going to end but the idea is they're all such wildly different things to see on yeah. purpose in fact people who are watching this live on the premiere i guarantee you couldn't guess the next five things we're going to see nope because for a start we're not including the musée de louvre over there uh, we're picking really unusual things. <laughs> and it's a busy street. The idea is we're gonna get to the other side of this street when we can, uh, for the first thing that's in my field of vision. Yeah. Uh, but also the first hour in this month, it feels like it's a very touristy. Yeah, I think people mm. have that image, but like I said, there's a lot of things that don't feel so touristy. There are, of course. I mean, people come here primarily for the Louvre. Right. But I think uh, you can spend almost like a whole day just in this hour on this mall. There's so many things to Absolutely. see. Absolutely, even though it's one of the smallest ones. Have you seen this before? Yeah. <laughs> this is one of the uh, invader pieces of art. Sometimes yeah. these invader pieces of art, this isn't even one of the stops, by the way. This isn't even one of the stops. <laughs> but sometimes these invader pieces of art are tied to the area. Yeah. And in this case, they got uh, Le Joconde, the Mona Lisa, because the Louvre Museum is just uh, 50 Nearby. meters away. Yeah. What I like about these, uh, let's keep walking. What I like sure. about these uh, invaders yeah. is sometimes they got a little wink wink to yeah. the neighborhood. And if you figure it out, you feel like you've... Uh, like you're smart and it's yeah. always nice to feel smart. Yeah, a friend of mine told me there's like an an app you can go oh, and yeah. like capture them. The Flash Invader app. Yeah. I never got it because I think it's it strikes me as addictive <laughs> and I worry that I would uh, spend all my day just looking at the walls of Paris, which yeah. I already do. Yeah. Uh, speaking of wall, that's a bit of a clue for one of the first things uh, that we're going to see just up this way. Um, but working in this area, do you find that you get to know the other people that uh, have the shops and stuff around? Yeah, absolutely. Is it absolutely. like a nice little community vibe like that? Exactly. Even just in our streets. Uh, which you've got is a the, lot of things in that street. Yeah, it's a really cool street. You know, we have obviously the, the wine shop next door, the cheese shop next door. Right. Those are definitely our 
our strongest allies, but we also have, you know, uh, the bar at the corner. Uh, we have the, the restaurant in front of us. We right. have all of these little shops, boutiques, and, and it's all, um, you know, in the same spirit. People that want to make good food, good drinks, yeah. quality uh, elements, and not none of these places are really like touristy, I feel. No. You know, like a lot of Parisians come here and it feels like a local place more than a touristy place. It feels like you could do a whole day of yeah. cheese tasting, wine making, <laughs> gin making. It reminds me a bit in the second hour of this month, there's uh, Rue de Nil. Yes, it's very inspiring streets. Is that one guy that owns everything on that street as well? You know um, I don't think so, but Frenchy owns a big part of that. Yeah. You have uh, Terroir d'Avenir, which right. is very very cool produce. Um, uh, the the coffee shop is amazing. And now they have, there's a chocolate shop that I highly recommend. There you go. We'll put that, uh, what's it called? <laughs> Plaque. 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 A okay. friend of mine uh, turned me on to it and it's like it's a specialty addictive. coffee shop? It's, um, it's chocolate. Okay, and they do, um, they do something I've never seen before, which is they uh, do some kind of chocolate water. Chocolate water? Yeah, it's okay. like the pulp from the cocoa or something. I'm not knowledgeable. So. I'm adding it to the list. We'll put it in the show notes below. Now, I want to yeah, stop here. Really now, cool. this this is something that regular viewers and listeners know I'm obsessed with. Have you ever seen this before? Don't know. I've been in that street a thousand times. I've never seen that. It's probably one of the ugliest, cool things yeah. in Paris, right? <laughs> Especially when you compare with the architecture around here, which is so stunning. But this is the... Uh, inside of a tower okay oh wow okay. of the 800 year old philip august wall i don't think i've ever showed pictures of this before because i've never been able to capture it nicely because it's not very pretty no it's not but when but, you know what it is it's really cool imagine they would have built this 1190 this big wall around paris leading down to the fortresses wow. uh at the louvre which you can right. still see underneath but this bit uh, the story, I, I've seen the story somewhere, but it's like they discovered it fairly recently when they were building a metro or something. Oh. And then they're like, oh, we'll just leave this a couple <laughs> steps from the Louvre for people to walk past and be like, what is that? I've got no idea. But it's um, ancient, ancient history. Even this, there's like a little like well yeah, kind of thing in there as well. Trying which, to watch that. It's like a well or something, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? But there's not, uh, I mean, even the sign they put in there doesn't really do it justice for no, something definitely. so magnificent. They could do like a, a picture of what it was before, you know, or something. The things they could do. I know. If only people cared. <laughs> and that's, all, that's kind of my, what I want my legacy to Paris to be is for people to <laughs> fall in love. I mean, it's hard. The job is hard because. Yeah. But, you know, it, yeah, if at least we had a, an idea of what it was before, it could be, it, people maybe would stop by more. I think so. Yeah. Especially like a picture with like some archers at the top, yeah. firing arrows down exactly. at the end or something like that. Anyway, that's the first of uh, the things we're going to see. Let's take a shortcut this way. Yeah. Because now it's going to be two, three, four, five. I wonder if people watching at home have any idea what the other... Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. It's such a lovely part of Paris to go for a walk in, I, I think, know, as well. right? That big Rue de Rivoli that, we, that, yeah. that you're just off, and then uh, Rue de Louvre, this one. Yeah. A bit much. Yeah, exactly. But you have so many small streets, like this one, Rue Jean-Jacques Rousseau, you know, that are off of it, and with little, you know, hidden spots. Did you know the name of the street before? Or did you just say the street Yeah, side? yeah, because I used to work on the other part of that street in a wine bar. Okay. And uh, this restaurant, I used to go like a long time ago before it was uh, taken over by uh, Jean-François Piège and it's like a very old school Parisian restaurant. Very cool. I love it. Yeah. It's always uh, like sometimes I feel like Parisians just know all the streets, like a taxi driver <laughs> or something like that. No, but, I uh, don't. There you go, you cheated fair enough. A little bit. <laughs> uh, but it's cool, like I feel central Paris is a street I'm not even sure I've even walked down before. Yeah. Uh, uh, Great door knocker, I've got a point Beautiful. Out. No, it's really cool. Uh, and then, uh, oh, look, I'm like a tourist here now. I feel like I always take the route of Louvre. But the second thing, right on to the second thing. You might have to help me with the pronunciation here because it doesn't look... <laughs> Galerie Vero Doda. Galerie Vero Doda. And this is uh, the second thing I wanted to point out because it's one of the um, covered passages. Absolutely. And there's uh, quite a few of them in the in the neighborhood and in the first arrondissement and second arrondissement as well right uh, that are very um how can i put this classy you know very Definitely. 
picturesque. Yeah, very beautiful. I mean, also, I mean, look at the ceiling over there. It's stunning. I know. But and there's nobody. It's not that well known. But look at like the cool thing with I think the cool thing with Paris in general is for people who live here and for tourists, it's so easy to take those main streets like yeah. Rue de Louvre that we were on with all the traffic yeah. and the uh, cafe chairs that are in the way of cameramen and stuff like this. <laughs> then you go one street over. Yeah. It gets beautiful. It's and then you take a side atmosphere. street off that street and like the two of the busiest streets in Paris are right next to us and suddenly we're in this beautiful quiet place. I know. It's so you it don't even feel like it's Paris. Years. Yeah. Anyhow, uh, in terms of this gallery, Vero Vero Duda, that doesn't sound very French to me, the Duda. I think it's Duda. a last name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but as, as I understand people, uh, the people who r ran these shops used to live upstairs. So when yeah. you look up on the top, that's where they would it's have... It's so uh, beautiful, these little uh, windows. <laughs> totally stunning. So uh, of the galleries, uh, now, in all fairness, you're a gin distiller. Mm -hmm. So I don't expect you to come in with facts about the galleries, but I did some <laughs> research. I know that there's, uh, there used to be hundreds, maybe 150 or something of these. Oh, wow. And they made them because uh, it was a way that people could go shopping without trudging through the mud and... Mm, uh, the rain. Exactly, exactly, like, <laughs> like today. today. <laughs> yeah. Look at this. Look, escalier. What is this? On peut pas. Okay. On peut pas aller et on peut pas filmer? Non. On s'en okay, va. On va continuer. Il y avait problème. Désolé, on l'avait pas vu. Merci, bonne journée. She Oops. said to, to walk quickly <laughs> yes. and film less. Uh, Apparently it's forbidden to film. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I got a story about this uh, cafe. Oh, I'm, you do? I'm reluctant to tell it because it's a story that hasn't really finished yet. But, but I was here I'm once. I'm curious now. <laughs> There's a really uh, nice uh, patron in there. Yeah. The man that, that runs the place. And I was sitting on a chair and I told him I had this art project with cafe chairs. <laughs> right? So I told the waiter. Uh, was I, it true? Yeah, this, this is really recently as well. And I told the waiter, I was like, can I talk to the owner? He's like, he's out the back um, shucking oysters, right? Okay. Or maybe it was snails or something. It was very, like, it felt very authentic. <laughs> and I went out and talked to the guy and uh, he was very helpful with this art project involving cafe chairs. So watch this space oh, and wow. remember this place. I want to know more now. <laughs> cafe de l'époque, cafe de l'époque. Okay, we're going to go this way. Yes. Oh, we'll cross it, uh, we'll cross it the pedestrian crossing. So Galerie Vero Duda. Philip August Wall, yeah. and then number three is going to be something completely different. It is. I think uh, some people who love Paris might already know what's next, <laughs> yeah. and some people who don't care about what we're going to see are ready to fume in anger. <laughs> it's going to be a controversial subject. The controversial <laughs> is important, I think. <laughs> So what do you think fine. about, uh, as, as a French woman yep. from Burgundy, who's lived in Paris for 13 years, Yes. what do you think about when you see a building like this on our left? Uh, honestly, I think it's okay. This one is not... Are you implying it's ugly? <laughs> are you inferring it's ugly? <laughs> it's modern. It is modern. I quite like the, you know, the kind of the duality you can have sometimes with Paris and you have little spots like that that, that are m more modern. So, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not bothered by it personally, but no, no. I mean, that's as not exactly not a great review. That. I'm not bothered by it, <laughs> but, um, but it's interesting. I think, like you said, I mean, the two buildings next to each other are real strong. Yeah, I quite like that contrast. Yeah. I like contrast in general. There you go. Okay, here we are in this beautiful courtyard. I bet there will be tourists there. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I think there'll be beret wearing tourists. <laughs> I think all these people just came for that. Yeah, maybe. There's a big tour group, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spell it out. Um, where is it? It's, I think it's the, that door, isn't it? Where the man's standing? And so, the woman is taking a picture. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so for you guys who've watched Emily in Paris, the uh, Netflix superstar of a TV show, the, behind us here, not far from the Palais Royal, is the offices of uh, the agency. The agency where the TV show is filmed is just up here. And uh, I want to talk to you about Emily in Paris. <laughs> sure. Because you're a French woman in Paris. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly, everyone's talking about Paris. I know. Do you like it? I mean, f not the show. Do you like the idea that everybody is... Sure. Yeah? I think... It's good well, for business? Yeah, I think 
it brought us maybe more people. Yeah. I, I think it's good. I, you know, I watched a little bit of it, not all of it, but just to see, I was curious what they would say about yeah. French people. And it's, uh, part of it is actually quite true, you yeah. know, painting us a little bit, you know, French and having long lunches and stuff like that. It's, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I don't mind it. And yeah, I think it brings people. And when I worked in wine, a lot of people were, uh, more aware of like Sancerre because I think they talk about Sancerre quite right. a bit during that show. And Everything they touch turns to gold. You know what you got to do if they're watching <laughs> Emily in Paris? You got to get Emily doing a gin making class. Yeah. <laughs> so it's that. That's the door there. It doesn't have the sign out the front. Okay, look, it's not really something to see, but if you're a fan of the show, mm -hmm. uh, then come and take a picture. But it's just a building. Mm -hmm. I mean, but it's like everything. It's like the Mona Lisa. It's just yeah, a painting. Exactly. Uh, but it's popular. I'll give a, um, a shout out to a coffee shop that I like around here. It's called cool. Lazy, Lazy. And it's up there on the right. Oh yeah. Uh, I've been there once, it's really cool. Now let's walk through uh, this way. I, th I figured if we're gonna get in trouble for filming anywhere, I think it's gonna be here. You think so? Yep, that's where I think it's gonna happen. Although I was wrong. <laughs> Charlotte, you didn't think we were going to actually walk in the Palais Royal, did you? Oh, well. The most secretest, privatest place in all I of know, Western Europe. I know, I know. No, no. If you are to ever go in the Palais Royal with a big looking camera, uh, they're going to tell you, look, there's big looking cameras everywhere. Uh, you can't do it. They won't let you. So that no. was a glimpse. And that's all we're going to get today. There's, sh there's shoots going on everywhere. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to walk around on the outside and yep. describe in great detail what it looks yeah. like on this. So over there, you had <laughs> pillars. <laughs> I mean, it's just a really pristine and beautiful park. Yeah. Uh, and there's a whole lot of history that goes from before Napoleon to Tom Cruise. Yeah. But hey, look, if you can't film in there, you don't need to talk about it. Instead, no, absolutely. you can see beautiful cafes like yeah. Lazy that I mentioned before. Very Lazy. cool cafe. And more. And then uh, we're going to walk down this side street to get to the fifth and final place. Also, you know what's down there? The Bourse? Yeah, Bourse du Commerce. Have you been there before? Yeah. It's a really cool... Uh, Museum. Yeah the, yeah, the top floor with the it's sort of bits. big yeah. fresco thing that's oh, up there. Oh, it's, it's beautiful. The building itself is amazing. Absolutely worth a look. So um, we talked about this on the podcast a little bit, and I recommend people can go back and listen to it uh, immediately after watching this. Mm -hmm. But um, gin, yes, I thought France was a wine country. <laughs> you corrected me on that one. It's changing. Uh, where did, what's, what's going on? Well, I think France is still a wine country. Right. But I still now people are a little bit more inclined to try other things. Right. And with the influence of other countries, other cultures. Um, gin is definitely not French in the culture. Um, and uh, it's changing now. I think people want uh, more. And it's, I think French people have this sensitivity to good things, right. good food, good drinks. Yeah. So craft gin and craft what are, Well, you said spirit. that on the podcast too, craft gin. What is that? Yeah. What's the difference between gin and craft gin? <laughs> well, craft just means it's, uh, it's usually made by hand right. and it's usually, you know, uh, carefully selected ingredients. Um, we do pretty much everything ourselves right. apart from the neutral spirit, which is a part that most distilleries, including the craft distilleries, don't do. Right. Um, so, yeah, so this is a, um, yeah, it's, a, it's like, um, you know, a painting or it's like a cooking it's something that requires uh, time and effort and and usually ends up being high quality and I'm excited to taste the one that I made uh, yeah. which I stand by juniper dream as being one of the best named gins it's beautiful do you remember some of the other <laughs> should we walk this way? do you remember some of the other um, uh, names that people have come up with I uh, what's your one Charlotte's Charlotte's Inc Charlotte's Inc uh, that's uh, because, well, we're two women, two distillers, right. and both of our name is Charlotte, and we love tattoos, so we put ink in there. 
But is it also Charlotte's Inc. is in like incorporated like a co no, company? it's kind of a little Was that wink. a play on words there? Yeah, a little bit, but yeah. the point is more, it's to focus more on the the tattoo part of things right. and the, the print part right. of things. And um, for those who uh, haven't yet listened to the podcast, if I may yeah, explain a little sure. what you do quick and what I loved about it is that you go in and you uh, take the ingredients. I think a, a few people made Harry Potter yeah. <laughs> comparisons. You take the ingredients, uh, like uh, obviously juniper, but there are things like pepper and apple and ginger or whatever, and you make the gin of your choice. With yeah. some guidance from you guys, you have your own little distillery station. Yeah, pot still. Which I thought had a Jules Verne kind of vibe in there too. So yeah. Harry Potter meets Jules Verne over a drink, <laughs> over a cocktail. Yeah, exactly. And then you take your own bottle home. And I loved it, and that's why I want to promote you guys and make yeah. sure some of the Eiffel Tower followers come and say hello. Uh, but also in a cool part of town. Yeah. Where you can just walk past chefs cooking in kitchens, <laughs> where you can find great restaurants, and where you can find places like the Palais Royal, yeah. which is allegedly back there, but no one would ever know because you can't film. <laughs> uh, now we are going to come through to the last place that we want to see, yep. which is just through, I think there's a little shortcut up here. Um, you know what else there is? There's a little Napoleon shop here. Have you ever seen this? Really? We must look in the window. If you, if you ever want some Napoleon memorabilia, is that you? You want some Napoleon memorabilia? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I've always thought this might be a good uh, episode for me to to record. Are you a fan of Napoleon? <laughs> it keeps coming up in conversation, doesn't it? No but, way! But um, look, like coins and statues and Napoleon champagne. It looks like Lego over there. They have a perfume, like a Napoleon perfume. Hats, busts, uh, and obviously books. Wow. But I've never seen it open. So huh. uh, it's another mystery, Charlotte. That's a good point. <laughs> okay, now for the final for the fifth of five things. This could have easily been 10 things because we're passing a lot of great things along the way as well. The Grand Colbert restaurant up there is pretty cool. Absolutely. But we're gonna go in here. You know, some people say that the, uh, on days like this, these overcast days, yeah. these uh, Tasmanian buildings in Paris, have a better light like it feels like they, they stand out a little bit more what do well, you think about that maybe I think maybe that was intentional in the design because we know Paris is a pretty rainy city so and especially this year yeah I think oh, it's been like absolutely. the rainiest year in the history oh, of it's Paris it's been a little bit miserable I have to say <laughs> but one uh, great cure for misery I always say it's beautiful galleries. Absolutely. And what we're going to do now is go into the Galerie Vivienne, which looks like it's decked out for Christmas. And it we're going to... Uh, but it's always very uh, sparkly. It's even more you. sparkly and beautiful today. Yeah. And we'll try and uh, get all the way through here before the mayor comes and tells us to turn off the camera. Hopefully. <laughs> good wine shop there. Which one? Uh -huh. Very good. Very expensive, but... You know, they have, uh, see, like, Jeroboam or Ikem. How big the bottle is as well. Yeah. Uh, it's um, a very old wine shop. I think uh, this is just one of the loveliest, could you call it a shortcut? Yeah. One of the loveliest shortcuts in Paris. The mosaics on the floor are just I know. stunning. You see, sometimes you see uh, art students sitting in here with paper and pen and just, like, sketching. I mean, but look at this. Absolutely. This is beautiful. And the dome, I mean. It's fair to say they don't make them like this anymore, I think. No. So when you come into places like this, does it make you feel like a sort of, like, because I'm not French, I don't feel any <laughs> pride for nice French things. <laughs> Does it make you go like, oh, we nailed this one? Or are you just like, hey, is it? Honestly, yes, a little Does bit. <laughs> Without any arrogance, I know no, you have that No, we're not arrogance. I just mean that Yeah, that no, personally, feeling. I also, you know, I, I'm not from Paris. I'm right. French, but I'm not from Paris. And seeing places like that makes me remember why I live here. Yeah. And I, I do think this is definitely one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And it's... 
you know, these little shortcuts, these little places that seem hidden are so gorgeous and feel so special. And how cool to think, I don't know how long it would take if you walked from your office mm -hmm. to here, you could probably do it in like seven minutes or Absolutely. something like that. Absolutely, it's so close. To think that people travel from all over yeah. the known universe to come and see this kind of Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. And it's just in your backyard <laughs> or any Parisian's backyard is one I'm of the things. I'm very blessed. It just makes the city so special. Yeah, it does. Uh, I think uh, for people watching at home, if you come in this place, a lot of these shops are totally worth uh, exploring. Absolutely. I've got a personal uh, the, map. the map shop I really love, and I think yeah. people should go and check out this map shop as well. It's got uh, uh, all kinds of little treats and treasures. And then also over here behind us is the uh, BNF, the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, which is closed today, but it's absolutely worth a look. But by my count, Charlotte, that's five things. Yeah. All next to each other. Yeah. Uh, starting a walk or, or even ending the walk at your gin distillery and that's what I advise everybody to do to go and check out the gin distillery of uh, the La Sec. and uh, on that note standing outside of the Galerie Vivienne I say thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you Oliver that was great. Thanks to everybody who's watched to the end and uh, I'll be back again with another episode real soon. Merci Bye. Au revoir. And au revoir. <laughs>